Hey, so today we're going to do a little experiment with the speed of sound. So um, in order to do this, we want to um, understand how sound works a little bit. So let's jump into it. Okay, sound works by atoms hitting other atoms. So you have a source of the sound and that hits the first set of atoms, which hits the next set of atoms which hits the next set of atoms. And as it continues, that has a speed to it. And different materials have different speeds of these atoms colliding with each other as they go along. So we're gonna be working with the speed of sound in air, which happens to be 1125 feet per second or 343 meters per second. Okay. So the experiment that we're going to do is we're going to make a noise that bounces off of something and then we can catch the reflection and we can measure the distance to that thing using the speed of sound. In order to do that, we need the distance equation. So we have D equals the speed of the thing times the time that it takes to travel, okay? So that's how we're gonna do it. So in this case, we're gonna make a noise here and we're gonna bounce it off of an object, say a garage door. Okay, so in order to be able to measure the noise and the, the time that it takes for the sound to travel over and back, Humans aren't very good at measuring those kinds of time frames, but we are really good at um, building tools that help us do that. And so we're going to use today something that you guys probably all have access to, a cell phone, to take this measurement. Okay, so the way that we're gonna do this is we'll make a noise and we'll put our microphone or cell phone right there. So as the noise goes by, we'll record it, and then it bounces off the garage door, comes back, and we'll record the, re the, fle the reflection or the echo. Okay, so um, because this is twice the distance that we want to measure, we're actually going to want to divide by two once we calculate the distance. We, so we have the speed of sound, which is 1125 feet per second. And then we'll multiply it by the time, and the time will be whatever it is. And then we'll get distance. So that's gonna be speed times time divide by two. One last thing. So we, we need to make the correct sound in order to be able to measure this time very accurately. And to do that, we're going to use something called an impulse. So a sound that starts very rapidly and grows very loud. So something like a hand clap, okay? And um, that might not be loud enough for when we go outside. So I'm actually going to use two pieces of wood that I'll slap together and that will create the impulse sound that we need in order to do this measurement. Okay, you guys ready to do this? Let's go do it. Okay, so here's the setup. So I have my garage door and then a measuring tape all the way out to a crack in the sidewalk. I have an iPhone, an Android phone, and a sound recorder. And then I have my two pieces of wood that I'm gonna to hit together for the impulse generation. And the spot we're measuring is three, 33 feet, 10 inches. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so now we just need to convert the video files that we 
recorded with the phones into audio files so that we can open them with Audacity. So we'll use um, VLC Media Player to do that. So we go to Media, we'll convert. Those are the two files. And then Convert Save. We're going to convert it to an audio FLAC file and they'll get put in the same destination as the source. Okay, and that's done. So now we need to bring those files into Audacity. So I'll, I'll mention that both VLC and Audacity are open source programs um, that are easy to get and they're pretty easy to use. So with Audacity we'll import the first audio and we're going to pick it from the iPhone first. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this stuff is the things that we want. So let's just click over there and play it and see. It is. So we're going to delete the rest of this stuff. Okay, so we can see that there's um, there's a sharp thing there, and then there's the echo or reflection right there. Let's see if that's the actual. Uh, yep. So if I just grab this, this is the echo part of it. It's kind of hard to tell. But there's the two bounces right there, so uh, basically we just need to figure out where stuff started. And it's basically where you see the sharp change right there. That's when our waveform starts, and we can see that that's 39, 5, 12. Okay, so we're going to go to our spreadsheet and we'll type that in. 39.512. Our stop time for that one. Looks like it starts right there. And that's 42.157. All right, so looks like we have that number of samples, and here's the sample rate for the iPhone and the Android. They both sample at a rate of 44.1 kilohertz. So if I divide this number by the total number of samples per second, I actually get the total time in seconds, which is what we needed for our distance calculation. Okay, so then if I take the speed of sound, which we have is 1125, and I multiply it by this time, I get this distance. Okay, and then because our distance was doubled, because we sent out the first pulse and then we were looking for the echo, we divide by 2 and we get our actual distance of 33.73 feet. Now the actual distance was 33.833 and so we can see that we are 0.28% off. That's pretty good. Pretty good for an experiment like this. Okay, so I'm going to fill out the rest of the sheet and 
then we'll wrap up. Okay, so that was kind of some work. Anyway, so we can see that we're basically around a half a percent off on our measurements, which I, I'm pretty impressed with that. That's cool. You can see that it doesn't really seem to matter what kind of technology we're using. They're all about the same amount off. Anyway, so I'm I'm really happy with this result, and this is something that you guys could do if you want. Okay, talk to you later.